Anyway, um, do you recommend weight training while fasting? And also, how long after training should you eat? I'll leave that to you. Oh, I'll go first. Pressure's on. Um, it depends where you're at. So it's, I mean, if you're someone that's walking around 6% body fat, you know, you're very lean, like you've covered in veins and things. Um, probably not. I'd prefer someone had a meal before, just because it's not going to be enough. I mean, your body will, will sort of alter it through your diet, but your substrate just isn't ever going to be topped out if you're walking around at 6% body fat. Um, for your high body fat, um, it is quite all right. Um, for example, I've, I've done intermittent fasting before for a period of about three, three, four years. Um, I trained fasted a lot of that time. It didn't impact my muscle gain. Um, but as long as the meals you're having around that are sufficient. Um, so that's that part of the question. Mm -hmm. I think that like the thing about after training nutrition is, is an anabolic window, but the reality is that it's 24 seven. Your body's always, um, you know, increasing your sort of, um, Precisely. Muscle growth, you know, as long as you're giving that stimulus to grow from. Yeah. Um, if you're doing something like one meal a day, I don't know, you might you might do it maybe within two to three hours after, but that's just the aspect of like rehydrating, um, putting mm -hmm. minerals back in. Um, if you're doing more meals than that, I just I wouldn't I wouldn't stress too much about that sort of thing. It's more about what just me, Bart and Harry said already, sort mm -hmm. of thing. Yeah, I, I sort of, like yourself, I think that if somebody's really ultra lean, which I don't think is actually a really good idea unless you're going into competition anyway, I think it's sometimes people get too lean um, and that does have an effect, um, literally tanking their hormones and all sorts of things. So it's not a not a, an advisable thing. Um, I mean, I'd, I definitely wouldn't eat right before I'm going to do the exercise. I'd probably stick to about... An hour and a half prior or you know so i've got it just a bit in the tank as uh, jonathan said and then uh, you know an hour after um because uh, the whole purpose is you're tearing down and as long as you're getting really the, the you know the fundamental thing as you know bart knows jonathan knows and anybody in the bodybuilding thing 2.6 grams of leucine Every time you put that with a whole lot of other aminos, you're going to get muscle protein synthesis, you know. So how much you get is how much substrate you're going to put in, how much taurine you're going to put into amplify to, for the for the protein transporting effect plus the myostatin inhibition to amplify leucine's effect. So that's really what we're sort of talking about. Also, taurine does actually raise insulin slightly but not a lot it has it sort of improves insulin signaling in a sense it's sort of a regulatory thing so i think it actually combines really well with that sort of insulin to glucagon sort of 1.3 where it actually will pump it up to a pro probably about at 1.5 so you'll get get a better a better effect than what you would get just having a couple of steaks and not doing much else and that's the reason why I, I view the taurine as a really important biohack in bodybuilding to basically amplify, but not overexpress. Um, you know, you don't need to overexpress um, insulin, but you need to basically slightly try and actually, imp you know, increase the, the sort of signal strength, but not a lot because that's not important. It's just slightly above that base level. It seems to have, without going too crazy, um, to improve um, the sort of because uh, I, I like to. I, I think that bodybuilders really need to, as you're basically healing right after, you really need to pick up a bit the the actual mTOR signaling, especially mTOR one, because that's going to play a big role in in the healing part and really building more more muscle a bit more rapidly at that point. So that's how I sort of view it as a hack than anything else. Um, so that's sort of the, the combination sort of thinking behind that, that I sort of have, but, uh, you know, and that's, that's another reason why I'm not a big fan of a lot of these protein powders, because a lot of them just don't have any taurine and, uh, they, you know, it's a, uh, some of the old, old people in the past used to sort of. Um, consider those because some of them actually I know that 
do you remember some of the old bodybuilders? They they used to um, put in some organ meats into their um, uh, their smoothies. Shakes. Yeah, they yeah. did. I know um, a top for the extra competitor that did exactly that. He would yeah. do glass of orange juice, I don't know whey protein, and um, like some liver or something like you know, yeah, a palm sized liver. And he, he thought it was brilliant. He said like his, his training was on fire doing that. So you know. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so and and it's and it's really getting the choline, the taurine, those sort of things in there at the same time, and they really have a lot of important roles to play. You know, it's a synergy of all these things. It's the synergy of nutrients that what we're talking about. And sometimes people sort of they we overfocus on single um, supplements or single nutrients or stuff like that, but really the magic comes from this sort of symphony of all these sort of animal compounds which are largely animal related from their sources where they come from so it's really that that makes the big difference i find and i i'm always i i actually learned more from some of these old bodybuilders than i actually learned from the studies initially they sort of opened my eyes to understand okay i need to look into this research i think that it's underrated where the modern guys are completely unaware of it. Have you? I think you've probably noticed that. Yeah, it's um, it's what we call in bodybuilding bro science. So, if you get back, say, fifty years, maybe a bit longer, you know, the the standard like training protocol might have been like an upper lower or full body split. You know, so you're getting mm-hmm. multiple um, periods of time in the week within your you're getting training stimulus. So frequency is up. They've realised muscle protein synthesis for a body part can be. I don't know, I think, two to three days give or take um yep. so it may, means it sort of equates to training each muscle group at around about two to three times a week they've done studies on it recently where they said basically two is about about the about the bats of area you want to be in twice a week um three you sort of risk the the issue of under training some muscle groups because you're not giving them a stimulus mm-hmm. um so if you're doing something three times a week hard with you know a, a high level of volume you're not going to be able to recover from it so it's it's very individual in your sort of um adaptive and recovery ability mm. um in regards to that sort of thing i think there's also a bit of concern that you you also may end up as you said over over exercising some muscle groups and creating imbalances in the in the body as a consequence so that can yeah. actually create more injuries and sort of uh, also funny um, you know, where some people sometimes um, say, oh, I'm getting this sort of strange pain in this part of my leg or this is happening or whatever, and I'm going, well, you've probably overtrained this part, undertrained your glutes. And I, I actually did that in the past, and I had really a lot of pain in the front part of my legs because, I, you know, sitting too long and walking too much like a high high intensity and not and sitting for many hours and then eventually ending up undertraining my glutes. And then having yeah. all this pain, I'm going, oh shit. <laughs> so yeah. Just to reiterate a point earlier about the um about Nathan's question. So having a meal beforehand, if you're gonna do that. Um just just like Harry said, just have you know a small meal. It doesn't have to be, you know, a pound of meat or anything, you know, sort of it depends on your size, but you know, two or three eggs and I don't know, half yeah. a pound or less of meat. Um, you just want a bump. So you don't want your you want your body to be in a state of digest when you're training. You want a sufficient time between having the meal and training. Um, a lot of your blood and your energy goes towards digestion when you're actually doing it. So you want your neural drive basically to be um, not impacted. Exactly. And, that, and that's really only the people that are basically, as Jonathan said earlier, that are too lean. Mm. You really need to get something in there. And sometimes something that actually gets in faster and digests a bit faster. Um, it can be a protein shake type thing. It can be, you know, a bit like a, a whey protein type thing with a, you know, so an egg or two, something like that mixed in. Mm. You know, we're not talking about just a small meal type thing. And then, yeah. Yeah, it's exactly what I've done. Um, before a competition, my biggest meal of the day would actually usually be my pre-workout meal, but that's because I'm walking around at 5% body fat. Um, mm, exactly. I just need, and my body's so depleted from the day before that, you know, I don't want to eat a massive meal late at night. It'll affect my sleep. So it's all a balance. You have to work out in your head yeah, what's precisely. going to give you the best yeah. bang for your buck and um, what's going to 
improve yeah. recovery the both yeah around. and you still need good sleep for growth hormone at mm. night and all that sort of stuff so that's really Definitely. important you know so and you know and that's and people don't realize and, and it's the reason why taurine is associated with increasing growth hormone it's really because if you have it in the evening it's amplifying melatonin GABA. that's really where it's coming from mm. GABA exactly GABA ray in particular yeah so yeah. 